Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Does Science, and today I want to talk about state collapse in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. We already know that before we perform a quantum measurement, it is impossible to predict what the result will be. All we can say is the likelihood of any given result. Today we'll discuss what happens after a quantum measurement. The answer to this question introduces yet another layer of complexity into quantum theory. We learn that the very act of measuring a quantum particle fundamentally changes its state. So let's go! To understand what happens right after a measurement in quantum mechanics, we need to start with a refresher about measurements. And for more details, you should check out the corresponding videos linked in the description. The general setup is that we consider a physical quantity A that in quantum mechanics is represented by a Hermitian operator A called an observable. We call the observable A to keep the discussion general, but in reality this will be something like the position or the momentum of a particle. The observable A obeys this eigenvalue equation, where lambda n are the eigenvalues and un the eigenstates. Postulate 4 of quantum mechanics, discussed in the videos on measurements, tells us that when we measure A in a system in state psi, then the outcome of that measurement is an eigenvalue lambda n of the operator A, and I will get that result with the probability P given by the absolute value squared of the bracket between the eigenstate un associated with the eigenvalue we measure and the state psi. We should also remember that we can write the state psi in the basis of eigenstates un of the operator A, and the expansion coefficients c are given by the projection of psi onto the u-basis states. Using these c coefficients, we can rewrite the probability p of measuring eigenvalue lambda n in the alternative form absolute value of cn squared. This here is just a very quick refresher of postulate 4 of quantum mechanics, which tells us the probability of measuring a particular outcome of a physical property. If it doesn't sound familiar to you, then you should first watch the videos on measurements linked in the description. But if you're already comfortable with postulate 4, then today we ask the question of what happens after we perform a measurement. And for that we need postulate 5 of quantum mechanics. Postulate 5 tells us that if we measure A in a system in state psi, and we get lambda n as a result of that measurement, then the state of the system immediately after the measurement is the eigenstate un associated with the eigenvalue lambda n that we measured. So what does this mean? If we have a system in state psi and we want to measure property a, then in general we could get any eigenvalue of a as the outcome of the measurement. All we can know before the measurement is the probability of getting any particular outcome. But once we've performed the measurement, then we get one of these possible outcomes, say lambda n. This is where postulate 5 comes in. It tells us that starting from state psi, if we measure a and we get lambda n, then right after the measurement the state of the system changes from psi to un, the eigenstate associated with the eigenvalue that we measured. This process is called state collapse, and what it means is that the state psi of the system right before the measurement collapses to the eigenstate un right after the measurement of the eigenvalue lambda n. This postulate has profound implications and is one of the reasons why quantum mechanics often appears so counterintuitive. It is telling us that the very act of measuring some property of a quantum system has a dramatic effect on the system that we're measuring. It changes its state from whatever it was before the measurement to a completely new state. You should compare this to classical physics, where we can measure particle properties like position and momentum without changing the state of the system. Okay, so what we've discussed so far is the essential idea behind state collapse. However, in this discussion we've implicitly been assuming that the eigenvalues of operator A are first, non-degenerate, and second, that they form a discrete spectrum. In the rest of the video we explore the mathematical changes that are needed when we relax these two conditions. The changes don't affect the fundamental understanding of state collapse, but they're necessary in many situations. Let's start with the generate eigenvalues. In this case the eigenvalue equation needs to be updated to a uni equals lambda n uni where i is an index that runs from 1 
to gn. What this equation says is that eigenvalue lambda n corresponds to gn different eigenstates, and we use the index i to label these different eigenstates. In the videos on measurements, we discuss how the probability of measuring eigenvalue lambda n is given by the sum over the degenerate subspace of the absolute values squared of the brackets between the associated eigenstates and the state psi of the system. Again, we can write this in terms of the C expansion coefficients. In the videos on measurements, we also learned that we can rewrite this expression by using the projection operator Pn that projects onto the gn dimensional subspace spanned by the eigenvalue lambda n. What we can do now is we can start from the state psi of the system and then construct the state psi n by acting with the projector Pn on psi. Once we've done this, we show in the video on measurements that the probability P lambda n is equal to the norm of psi n. In turn, this can be written as psi Pn dagger Pn psi. And then using the fact that Pn is Hermitian, we get Pn squared. And using the fact that it is also idempotent, we get Pn. Overall, we can write this expression as the expectation value of Pn in state psi. Again, this discussion should be very familiar from the videos on measurements, and if it isn't, check out those videos first. We're now ready to update postulate 5 to the case of degenerate eigenvalues. The updated postulate tells us that if the outcome of a measurement of quantity A of a system in state psi is lambda n, then the state of the system immediately after the measurement is the normalized projection of psi onto the subspace spanned by the eigenvalue lambda n. This sounds like a mouthful, but the essential message of the postulate is unchanged. The state psi of the system changes after the measurement, and it becomes a new state that is associated with the eigenvalue that we've measured. Let's first check that this more general form is consistent with the case we discussed earlier of non-degenerate eigenvalues. If lambda n is non-degenerate, then the projection operator is simply the outer product of un with itself. According to postulate 5, the state after the measurement is pn psi divided by the square root of the expectation value of pn with respect to psi. If we substitute our expression for the projection operator of a non-degenerate eigenvalue up here, then we get un times the bracket un psi, all divided by the square root of psi un un psi. This here is simply the square root of the absolute value squared of un psi, and therefore the denominator cancels with this bracket up here. The final result is the state un. This, of course, is the result we expected from our earlier discussion. It is an obvious result given that we always work with eigenstates un that are normalized. I just wanted to go over every step here to make sure that we're all on the same page. When the eigenvalue lambda n is degenerate, then the pn operator up here projects onto the gn dimensional subspace of the eigenvalue. The numerator here is simply the projection of psi onto this subspace, and we call this state psi n earlier in the discussion. And this expectation value here is simply the bracket of psi n with itself. This of course ensures that the state we end up with is properly normalized. The final thing I want to discuss is the generalization of state collapse when we have a continuous eigenvalue spectrum. In this case, the eigenvalue equation is A acting on eigenstate V alpha equal to alpha V alpha, where alpha is a continuous variable. Let's consider state psi, and let's write it out in the V alpha basis as usual, where the expansion coefficients are given by the overlap between the basis state and psi. When we have a continuous eigenvalue spectrum, the result of a measurement cannot be a precise value, but instead a range of values. If we use a very precise measuring device, we can make the range very small, but it is physically impossible to bring it all the way to a single point. So in general, we must consider the probability of measuring alpha in some range between alpha 1 and alpha 2. From the videos on measurements, we know that the probability of obtaining this result is equal to the integral of the probability density over the relevant interval, which as usual we can write in terms of the expansion coefficients. 
Moving forward, we're going to call this interval capital delta. The next step is to define the projection operator onto this interval in the usual way for continuous variables. And taking all this update into account, we can write that if we start with the state psi, and our measurement of a gives an eigenvalue in the interval alpha 1, alpha 2, then the state right after the measurement becomes this new projected state, which again we insist is normalized. So when we have a continuous variable, state collapse works in the same way, but we need to update our mathematical expressions slightly. The most famous example of a continuous variable is position, which leads to the position representation in terms of wave functions. In this example, that many of you will be familiar with, we describe state collapse as wave function collapse. Unlike classical physics, in quantum physics we cannot measure the property of a particle without fundamentally changing its quantum state. As you can imagine, this leads to some very exotic phenomena, so I encourage you to explore further in the videos linked in the description. And as always, if you like the video, please subscribe.